As the trial of Derek Chauvin continues nearly two weeks into the proceedings, it's as clear as ever that the trial of Derek Chauvin doesn't really matter to the people who demanded that he be put on trial from the very moment that they saw the infamous video last May. For the media, BLM, the left generally, the trial is but a formality, a bit of a symbolic theater. They arrived at their conclusion when they watched the video, probably even before they watched it in many cases. And the only point of the trial is to affirm that conclusion. It's not to prove anything. Proof is irrelevant. Truth is irrelevant. For this crowd, the truth is whatever they feel, and the job of the rest of the world is to validate those feelings. That's how they approach all of life, and that certainly includes the court system. And it's why we now are living under a terrorist threat from these same people. We all know that they'll riot and kill and burn and destroy if they don't get their way. Every person in the country knows this. And we're meant to accept it. We're meant to simply cope with the fact that we now live in a country where if one side of the ideological divide is ever made very mad about something, they'll kill people and burn down buildings and be allowed to do it, given space to do it, to use the former Baltimore mayor's phrase, give them space to destroy, she said. We're also supposed to tolerate and accept that the left is using terrorist threats to influence the outcome of a murder trial. BLM activists and others have not been veiled or subtle about this at all. If they don't get their way, they'll destroy your neighborhood. Maybe kill you in the process. That's the threat. And we know they'll really do it because they've already done it many times. What this means is that the well has already been poisoned. You know, if the jury finds Chauvin guilty, it could very easily be because they don't want to cause rioting and they know that an acquittal would, would, would bring that. Also, they don't, want to, they don't want to worry about being doxxed and their lives permanently ruined and endangered because of it, because we know that's also going to happen. Now, maybe if they come back with a guilty verdict, it'll be because that's how they honestly read and interpreted the facts of the case. That could also be it, but we'll never be able to know that. We'll never know to what extent the terrorist threats influence the outcome of the trial if they come back with a guilty verdict. Ironically, then, the only outcome, the only verdict we can trust is an acquittal. We know if they find guilty, it would very well, it could very well be because of terrorist threats. Not necessarily, but it, it, that could be the reason or part of the reason. If they acquit, it will be in spite of the terrorist threats. They'll be finding that way in spite of the fact that they risk their own lives in doing so. There, there couldn't be any feasible motivation to come to that decision other than that it's the correct decision in their view. So that's what we're faced with. This is what the left has done to this country. In one of the highest profile murder cases in modern American history, perhaps the most high, the highest profile of all, the only verdict that we can be sure was arrived at honestly and based on the facts of the case is the very verdict that would cause our cities to burn. It's the double-edged sword of all double-edged swords. The consequence of living in a country where millions of people have just thrown truth out the window and morality out the window. But for those of us who still care about the truth and who are following this case and actually evaluating the evidence on its own merits, whatever small portion of people fall into that category, for those people, I think it's important to emphasize one important and, um, and, uh, and simple point. This is a point that has been totally lost in the media coverage. And even many of the seemingly honest people I've talked to who really want to know the truth in this case and really want true justice to be done one way or another seem to have forgotten or lost sight of this. And, and, and the point is this, reasonable doubt. Okay, that, that's the standard. I'm not a lawyer, not a legal expert or a legal scholar, but I know that much. Because that's simple, that's basic level. Derek Chauvin's lawyer doesn't need to prove that Chauvin is innocent. All he needs to do is demonstrate that there is reasonable doubt about his guilt. All he has to establish is that the prosecution has not fully established its own case. If you're sitting on the jury and you say to yourself when all is said and done, well, I think he really might have killed Floyd, but it's also plausible that he didn't, that should be a vote to acquit. I mean, we don't convict people or we aren't supposed to convict people in this country based on mites and maybes. Uh, maybe, I, th I think he probably did, but we'll, we'll convict him. That's not the way it's supposed to work. We convict based on certainty beyond all reasonable doubt. Now, the prosecution is still making its case. The defense hasn't even really begun to present its own case. But so far, based on what we, what we, based on what we knew going into the trial and what has come out during the trial, there is 
so far a whole heap of reasonable doubt. You know, the prosecution says that Chauvin acted negligently and used excessive force, which led directly to Floyd's death. But the defense has been able to show just by examining the prosecution's own witnesses that the force he used may not have been excessive. In fact, one expert prosecution witness admitted on the stand that Chauvin would have been justified in using even more force. He could have used a taser on Floyd, for example, and would have been justified in doing so. You could argue that Chauvin was more restrained in his handling of Floyd than he needed to be. You could argue that. We've also seen, and this again has come out during questioning of prosecution witnesses, that there was a hostile crowd at the scene, and this impacts the way officers handle a suspect. We've seen that Floyd was resisting, was belligerent, was complaining that he couldn't breathe even before he was on the ground. We've seen that Floyd had three times, three times the lethal dose of fentanyl in his system. Another prosecution witness testified that Floyd was foaming at the mouth. Now, once again, this is a prosecution witness supposed to be helping the prosecution's case, saying that he saw Floyd foaming at the mouth. Well, is that more likely to be a sign of someone overdosing or of them being choked to death? Yesterday, the defense played a clip of Floyd apparently saying, I ate too many drugs. Now, you could hear that clip and argue that he didn't say that, that he might have said something else. But I ate too many drugs is at least a plausible interpretation of the clip. You don't have to strain very hard to say, well, yeah, it's, it's, it sounds like he said that. Maybe he didn't, but it sounds like he did. That's all that matters. Is there a plausible scenario where Chauvin is entirely innocent of causing Floyd's death? And so far, yes. Here's a scenario. Floyd took three times the fatal do- dose of a dangerous narcotic, overdosed, and died. I mean, that's the plausible scenario. It's consistent with the facts. There's evidence to support it. And the prosecution hasn't disproved it beyond a reasonable doubt. They haven't even begun to disprove it. Haven't gotten close to disproving it. There's more trial yet to be had, but, you know, there's enough at this point, enough reasonable doubt to cover Chauvin with some left over. In fact, there's so much reasonable doubt at this point that the real question is why the case was even brought in the first place. A man with three times the failed dose of a narcotic in his system died while foaming at the mouth. Speculation that Chauvin may have still been part of the cause, but not the cause or even the main cause, is not enough to convict a man of murder in this country. Or at least it shouldn't be. Doesn't mean you have to believe Chauvin is innocent. Doesn't mean you have to like him. Doesn't mean you have to invite him over for dinner. It just means that reasonable doubt is the standard and that standard matters. Our justice system is built on it. We don't have a justice system without it. We don't have justice without it. But then again, the people shouting no justice, no peace, they don't care about justice, do they? Vengeance is what they're after. And they're determined to get it, get their vengeance one way or another. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.